Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. I'm continuing the message on veiled racism because I just had a feeling within my spirit um, that some folks need more knowledge when it comes to covert racism. Now, most of us, we know about overt racism. It's outwardly uh, negative, biased, uh, superior, I'm better than you type of behaviors. Okay. It's right there in your face. You know where you stand. Case in point years ago, uh, I remember being in Georgia. I was a child at the time and the Ku Klux Klan was passing out some propaganda. And from a distance, my father looked like he was white. Okay, because of how uh, light he was. So when the car got closer, the man, he had the paper out and being that he had his hood on his head, I guess he couldn't see very well. And he put he proceeded to give my dad the paper. But then he looked in the back seat of the car, looked at me, looked at my mom and snatched that paper back. Okay, that right there is in your face. Okay, I don't like you. Oops, (laughs) my bad. (laughs) You know what I mean? So this veiled racism, though, people are very good at times about hiding how they truly feel about that ethnicity that my mama warned me about, that ethnicity that my granddaddy and some other family members told me was no good. They steal, they lie. Okay. I gave you an example in the last audio message about the woman who moved her purse. Okay. As well as, well, not just a woman, but it's been more than that. (laughs) And, you know, it's a natural reaction for some folks and other people. They look you over real quick. And if they feel like, uh uh-oh, you look like the type, you might act like the type, let me make sure that I keep all my goods close to me, then so be it. And you know that it is um, a, a, a serious issue when that person can leave their belongings around some other folks and they're strangers to them as well. And yet they won't move their items. You see, (laughs) so it's unfortunate that we have that sort of thing taking place, but so true. I remember requesting that um, I needed a key to lock a cabinet at a workplace. The woman that was next to me, her accommodations were immediately met. Of, of course, she was not black. OK, um, but for me, oh, no, we're not giving you a key because uh, we need to be able to get access to your items and see what you got going on over here. And if the stereotype is that black folks still, well, some folks believe it. And so they just label everybody. OK. Not all ethnicities are guilty of what a few or more than a few do. And even if you do see a pattern with some folks, doesn't necessarily mean that that pattern has anything to do with the group that you're working with or that you are leading or you are teaching or you might even have some family members married to. (laughs) And I wonder how many folks in interracial relationships have gone to family functions and folks had to put up stuff and people made little veiled comments like, (laughs) oh, you know, (sighs) it's just uh, so nice, you know, seeing you while they're moving some things and telling somebody else, take that over to the car and put it in the trunk, dear. (laughs) Okay. Now. Veiled racism. Does it show up at the workplace? Do people whisper to you about that ethnicity and how they tend to be? Does veiled racism show up in your relationship? I don't want you talking to those people over there. Why? What did they do? What did they do to you? I just don't want you talking to those people. Well, you don't have any problem when I'm talking to these white people over here. But you have a problem with me. And then some folks will say, oh, well, you know, it's just jealousy. It's just whatever, whatever. Sometimes it's not that. The the deeper pick, the deeper meaning 
of why people behave like they do for some folks is because if you do a little research and you sit back and interview some of their family members and so forth, or you just listen to the conversation, you know that they've been influenced by somebody who considers themselves to be better than other ethnicities. Somebody who has had a negative experience with quite a few folks. And so I don't want to be involved with those, those people and I don't want you being involved with those people. And if you bring that person to my house, trust you me, you're not going to receive anything from me. I remember a person whose father simply told her, listen, you bring that black man to my house. I will not allow you to have your trust. Okay, and she was waiting and waiting and waiting for this trust and finally got of age. And it was interesting because the year that he was going to release the monies to her, here she comes with this black man. Now, in this particular case, had he not been so quick to talk about the color of the man's skin and sat back and just watched how he behaved, he would have seen that it's not so much the color of skin, right? It's, I mean, that should not even be a factor. It should be the character of the person, right? So this guy, he really had every right to be protective of his daughter. But his words could have held more power had he said, I've been sitting back watching how he behaves with you. He seems to be controlling obnoxious and then I'm also looking at the fact that he doesn't even have any money so the real reason that I think that he's involved with you has nothing to do with love but the fact that you are con connected with me and he just wants what I can give you did you tell him about the trust well yeah I did well <laughs> Hello, that's why he comes around. That's why he's acting like he's so into you. So I'm just going to hold on to your money. Oh, no, daddy. Oh, no. I'm going to hold on to your money. Oh, uh, wow. Well, until he proves himself to be a man that's worthy of your hands in marriage. I'm not talking about no cohabitation. You see, that's different. And could it? Could it be a veil racism? Maybe it could be if the guy ended up doing a lot of good things and, you know, he has proven himself to be this good guy. OK, now we'll see Seuss daddy, you see. But if you're dealing with a scoundrel and I don't care what the ethnicity is we could go down the line Italian Mexican Asian <laughs> you know Filipino African you know Nigerian Jamaican whatever the thing is is that if you're going to get involved with someone you've got to look at the fact that do you have your own personal prejudices or are there people in your family that have their personal prejudices and do you have plans on bringing this person around so that they can undergo all this stuff that your biased family members tend to put on ethnicities so that they can have some power and control over you to keep you, okay, from bringing another one of them around. I know some power and control tactics were used when I was young on me when it came to this dating outside of uh, your race oh huh excuse me who what okay well you know what this is what we're going to do and then the outline was uh set either you do this that or the other or you're not going to get this that and the other and people are so naive they don't believe that these folks exist let me tell you something veil racism has a smile on his face